So we live in an attention economy and you're very good at getting attention or putting attention on people, which is fantastic. From there, you have to turn the attention into money, which is actually the hardest part, right? Because you can sell, you can sell something but whatever you sell is a reflection of you. So if you sell trash, you damage yourself. If you shall sell garbage, you damage yourself. And then you're going to limit your ability to garner attention in the future. So you have to find something worth selling. I mean, I'm about to tell you, obviously, you should advocate for the real world and Hustlers University. Of course, I could say that. That's an easy one. Yeah. But typically, the attention economy is the one we now live in. And if you can garner attention, you can find a way to make money from it. You just have to make sure you don't sell out your brand. But it, then you have to go down the route of whether you want to spend most of your time garnering attention or if you want to spend most of your time actually delivering on the product or if you can find someone you can work with who has a team you can trust that the product is not going to be damaging to your reputation. If my thing is attention, I should probably find someone else and blow them up, likely? Yeah, I mean, that's one thing you could do. But, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think outside the box for you besides selling something, what else you could do. But you're going to get to a point. Also, it depends how large you get. And eventually you're going to get to a point where people are paying you to come on your podcast. I mean, that that's it gets to a point or you get to a point where you gatekeep and you get to decide who comes on your podcast. I mean, I would like to argue if you have one of the largest podcasts in the world, there's people who would do anything to get on it. And that puts you in a position of power. But if you can garner attention, then you're already doing very well. You have the ability to get the message out there to people. You have to give a lot of free value. Like, let's say you have your YouTube channel. I don't know if you have a newsletter. I don't know if you have an email list. I don't know if you have these things yet. That's something you should have. You should try and attract as much information and data from people as possible. You should build lists where you give as much value as possible. You should be seen as being a value provider. And once you're seen as those things from there, all you have to do is provide a service or a product and people will buy it because they need it. And they see you're a trusted person who gives value and then you will earn from it. The hard part isn't actually having a valuable product. The hard part is getting people to see it and buy it. So I have this all the time. People will come to me and say, Andrew, I've got a fantastic business idea. Yeah. I've got this lighter. It's a great lighter. I'll make the lighters. You sell the lighters 50, 50. And I'll sit and say, no, that's not 50, 50 business. That's 95% me because you have the lighters, but no one fucking wants them. Nobody cares. I can make them want them, but I can also make them want anything else. I can make them want anything on the planet. I can make them want a pen instead of a lighter. So why do I need to go 50-50 with you? I'm the marketing. I'm the sales. I'm the attention. The attention is the money. So once you manage to get, you keep getting YouTube views, you build a newsletter, you get people to pay attention to you, you're seen as a value giver, you have the ability to make people see things, then it doesn't matter. The rest is the easy part. That's really where the money is. When working with other companies, do you do agency work or do you only promote the products through your own brand? So, so that's what I've done. Now I'm in a position where people will come to me, let's say the lighter example, and they say, Andrew, help me sell this lighter. And then I was so concerned with my reputation, I would look at the lighter. And I'd be like, because I, I refuse to sell shit. Most celebrities don't care. Give me the money. I'm different because I'm not getting $50 million sponsorships from the Matrix, right? If I sell shit, it's going to be all over BBC saying I'm a scammer. This was so interesting. If my school, the real world was gar garbage, they'd be saying it's garbage all over the news because they hate me. Yeah. But they don't even mention it anymore because they know it's good. They try not to mention it because they don't want people to sign up. So I'd look at the lighter and then I'd be me and I'd say, you know what? This could change, that could change, that could change. And I'd tell them, you have to change these things for me to want to sell your lighter. And then they'd give me some excuse or some ridiculous timeline. And then I'd think, fuck, I'll do the lighter myself. And that's how I ended up with all my own products effectively. Now I do all everything myself. I mean, there's... The university idea I came with off the top of my head because I knew that if I recommended anybody to go and learn, how could I sit here and say, guys, you need to make money and become financially successful so you're as important as possible and then not give a resource for that? So then I'd give a resource and say, ah, these people teach you how to make money, but I've looked at all their resources and they're all shit. 